What is going on everybody? This is my third ATP video, which sounds crazy to say, but I'm here now. I'm officially a commercial pilot. You see the title of the video. We're gonna talk about not only commercial training and the check ride, but I also wanna talk about what's specific to ATP, they call it crew. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Crew, what is it? You know, what do you do at crew at ATP? Now, that's just ATP's way of saying time building. Of course, everything you're doing is time building, essentially. But this is when they send you and another instrument rated pilot to go fly around the country and build time. You know, one person's under the foggles, the pilot in the left seat, and then the pilot in the right seat is what they call the pilot monitoring. Now, what are you, what are you, where are you going during crew? It's all specific to your training location. Me, I went all over. I went, I'm here in Centennial, Colorado. I went out to Lincoln, Nebraska, Springfield, Missouri, Denson, Denison, Texas. I don't know how you say it. Got stuck there for like two days because of weather. Went to Arlington, Texas over in Dallas. Went to Midland, Texas. You know how I feel about Midland, those who've watched my first video. Uh, what else? We went to uh, El Paso, got some Mexican food. That was great. Uh, where is it? Mesa Gateway in Phoenix. We went out to Carlsbad, California, got some fresh in and out, and then came back and went to Glendale, which is just on the west side of the Phoenix area. Then uh, we went, came back to Mesa Gateway to drop off a plane, and then we went to the International Airport, Phoenix Sky Harbor, and then airline back to Denver. And that all took six days. So I took my instrument check ride on October 3rd. I did my crew evaluation. They have, you have to get checked out to actually go do that. And you could fail your crew eval and not be able to go, um, which I hope doesn't happen to anyone. Just be on top of your A game and, you know, you'll be OK. It's nothing super stressful. Just make sure you, you know, just do what the lead instructor tells you to do. Um, so I uh, did my eval on the 8th and then I went on crew the very next day um, or it's maybe like two days later. Uh, but I, I knocked that out, knocked out crew in six days. I was finished on the 16th was my last day. And I started uh, TAA training, which is a part of your commercial requirements on the 17th. So as soon as I got back, we jumped straight into it. Um, and I was already in contact with my instructor. Um, he was just asking me, you know, do I need extra help in any area? So we so he could get ready to, you know, pinpoint those areas once I get back from crew he was just introducing himself, you know, super chill guy. Um, his name is Evan, super cool guy, best instructor ever, man. Like, I'm not even just gassing him up. He's a super great guy, extremely knowledgeable inside of aviation as well as outside of aviation. Uh, so, yeah, so I got back from that, and now you have to do 10 hours of TAA training. Um, and then you do that the two hours, day cross country, two hours night, which you do in TAA training as well. I knocked that out, and... Uh, this is where it really hit me. Like that first week coming back was honestly hell because I I was told that first day on uh, Tuesday that I needed to take my commercial written by Friday. And honestly, it was by Thursday. And I was like, can I get one more day? And they're like, yeah, cool. So uh, I honestly started studying on Wednesday. So I only had two days to really study for my CACs, my commercial written exam, which I knocked out the park. I got a 98 on that. Boom, no problem. But like super stressful week because um, that Tuesday, I also had three flights that day. And then the next, the Wednesday, I had one flight in the morning. And then I had a ground with my instructor as well. And then the next day, on Thursday, we had a flight. And then we had a sim. And then Friday, we still had a flight and a sim. So all between that, I was studying for the written exam. Like, I was almost studying for 48 hours straight if it wasn't for the flights and the sims and the course of sleep. But that's all I did. Passed, like I said, with a 98. Boom, no problem. Next week. It was like, you need to take your FIA and your FOI, which are the instructor written exams. Woo, boy. So that's two written exams one week, passed both. I think one was like 86, one was like an 85, something like that. But still, passed doing great. Better than any of my college tests, I'll tell you that. Uh, that goes to show you passion is everything. You know, if you're passionate about it, you can go very far. So I took three written exams within the span of two weeks, all while flying and simming and ground lessing and everything. <laughs> so 
ATP is no joke. I mean, if you can get your writings done beforehand, get your writings done beforehand, it will make all the difference. I'm telling you, you have so much more free time than I did and than many other people have in the program. They are expensive. I mean, written exams are 175 each. So if you have the money, get it done. But if you don't, no worries. I didn't have the money up front like that, so I didn't really worry about it. But uh, if you have it, you know, spend it. Uh, Cool. So that was like that first part of commercial, which is getting all those written out the way as well as flying. Now, like the quality of the training, like how are the instructors here at ATP? Do they really care? Are they just here for time building? Well, I could tell you personally, my instructors are phenomenal. Like I already gassed up Evan enough, but <laughs> he's a great guy. And then I also have my lead instructor, which is Cameron, also a phenomenal, great guy, which in commercial, you have your eval and then you have a uh, mock oral exam. Um, both, like I said, both flights were awesome. Um, I have nothing to complain with any of my instructors, any of the quality of instruction that I've been given. Um, your instructor doesn't have to do ground lessons at ATP. They're honestly doing, I mean, I don't know what they have, their requirements or what the standard they're held to, but they're basically doing that out of the kindness of their heart because it's not in your program outline, any required grounds except the ones and in, um, instrument where you got to do the whole elevate sessions. Uh, but that's through Zoom. But your main instructor, they're not required, at least to my knowledge, to give you ground. So, And I had thousands of ground. That's, of course, it's an exaggeration. But I was doing grounds pretty much every day. Um, I was doing sims almost every other day. And I was doing flights like every day. Um, like I said, I started on the 17th and I did my check out on the 28th of November. So that's give or take like a month and some change. So you can imagine how hard I was grinding to get the 250 hours, of course, including sim time. And yeah, man, like I can't complain. Can't complain now. Other people that say, you know, their instructors don't care. ATP is just a pilot mill. I mean, you're right about the pilot mill and essentially it is. But the instructors do care. At least the ones I've have, and they, they care. My instru instrument instructor was phenomenal. You know, I passed my instrument check ride with flying colors. I went into my check ride confident and my commercial check ride instructors were phenomenal and I went to my check ride feeling confident as ever. Was I stressed that? Yes, that's normal. But I felt like I was given quality training. I practiced my maneuvers every single day and you have to do your part as well. You can't just blame the instructor here at ATP. You can't just blame ATP as a corporation that they are the reason why you failed. You also have to take some accountability and look back and say, did you did you study enough on your own? Did you do enough sims on your own time? The sim is open all the time. I was going to sim at 10 o'clock at night. I would stay there from to like 1 o'clock at night sometimes. Just grinding maneuvers, just doing actual cross-country flights in the sim and not speeding it up. And just getting the feel just of everything. You have to do that. Doing your powerful 180s over and over again. Resetting it into down one. Reset down one. Over and over and over again. You have to put in that work to become successful in the program at ATP. Don't just rely on the program outline because I promise you it's not enough. You have to do more than what they have outlined for you because it goes by like this. So that's my little rant right there, <laughs> but let's move on. So that's the quality part of the commercial training. It's awesome. Um, now maneuvers, they do suck, but just get through it, man. I promise you it will be worth it when you do that check ride. You do it perfect once and that's it. You'll never have to touch it ever again. So just just get it done. Now, my actual check ride, a breeze. Like I said, I was stressed out. The only reason I was stressed out because this is literally making or breaking my career. <laughs> That's how I looked at it. I'm, it. Maybe it's dramatic, but I looked at it as either I can get paid or I won't get paid after this flight. There's no in between. It's either pass or fail. And for, for instrument, it didn't really hit me like that. And for private, it didn't really hit me like that because like, those are both, uh, I guess, like recreational uh, things like you don't. That's not what's going to allow you to start your career. That's not what's getting you paid. So commercial was super stressful. Um, and for me, I was just stressed about staying within tolerances. Um, if you've flown out here in Colorado, you know, it can be, you know, all over the place. You might get a bumpy day, you might get a smooth day. And like, I was just nervous. Like, can I keep it within tolerances just one time? Can I land this powerful 180 one time? And I did it. I passed. Um, so if you're super stressed about your commercial checker, like just take a chill pill. Just relax. Like, yes, it is super like, you know, important that you pass this. But just relax. Just chill. Like you've put in the work. You'll do great. You know the ground knowledge. Like 
you'll do perfectly fine. Just don't trip. Like, just don't stress out because that's what's going to get on your skin. It's going to make you fumble. Um, like in my aura, I fumbled on a couple of things that I, I knew that I knew. But I, I was just, my nerves were getting the best of me. So, yeah, that's that. Um, that's pretty much, I think that's all I have. Um, oh, you know, no, no, that's not all I have. You know, of course, I love to yap, you know. I, that's the new word, you know, yapping. But I'm a yap. So, I want to let y'all know that I am not completing the full program here at ATP, which I've decided recently um, after I got my commercial pilot certificate. You know, I started crunching some numbers, looking at the program outline and how much money I have. And it just didn't look like I had enough money to complete the full program like I thought I did in the beginning. Now, I'm not talking about the program to cover, you know, my flight flying and the sims and, and the check rides. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about pocket money. I ran out of pocket money. So um, CFI Academy is not at your original training location. Um, there's only a certain amount of CFI Academies around the United States for ATP. And the closest one to me is in Ogden, Utah. Unfortunately, I just don't have the pocket money to sit at Ogden, Utah for a month, two months waiting on a check ride. Like I would starve. You know what I mean? So I need to find a job. I'm in the process of looking for a job right now, working at the airport. I'm crossing my fingers that I could get one again, um, working as a line service technician, because I just feel like it will be 10 times more valuable now that I will have my commercial single and commercial multi-engine. And uh, some flight time under my belt versus when I was in college, when I was a student pilot working on the ramp. And, you know, I can't really offer anything as a student pilot. You know, everyone's just like, you know, hit me up later when you have some more hours. So now that I have that, I think it will be extremely beneficial to going going back to working on the ramp. So that's my plan. Um, so I won't be doing my CFI initial at ATP, at least. I still might do it on my own, but just not right now. I need to start working on um, and then my CFII and my MEI I won't be getting that. But I still will be completing the program with 25 multi-hours in my multi-engine rating, um, commercial multi-engine rating, that is. And yeah, so, I mean, if you're in that program here at ATP and, and you've deferred your CFI, like, don't let it beat you up, man. Like, honestly, just look at it as a different route. Everyone's journey is not the same. Uh, ATP loves to set you up for a cookie cutter career path to the airlines, and it may work for some people. But it's not the solution for everybody. It's not the pathway for everybody. Um, so, so just take it with a grain of salt. Like, don't don't look at your other peers and think that they're better than you. You're all commercial pilots, uh, and you earn that. You've earned the right to say that you're a commercial pilot, and you can exercise your privileges as a commercial pilot. Now, I will say that becoming a CFI is absolutely beneficial to your career progression, and it truly demonstrates that you know the knowledge that you've learned over the years, and that you can now teach it. Which is like the I think that's literally mastery in the best form. So I wouldn't say again your CFI is useless. I just personally can't afford to do my CFI now without working. I need to get a job. I'm, I need to finish the program so I can just start bringing in the income. So, but with that said, I mean, if you know any opportunities, reach out to me. I mean, I would love to come work for somebody. You know, single engine operations, twin engine operations. Whatever, I'm still flying constantly. Once I get out the program, I'll still be flying. I'm not just giving up. But um, yeah, if you have an opportunity, just reach out to me. I would love to fly the caravan. I would love to fly Pizza Tub. I love to fly King Air. Um, I'm not just trying to do the cookie cutter path, like I was saying, like CFI to 1500 regionals to 1000 hours and then majors. That's that's not my goal. That's I, Honestly, it seems boring to me. So just to, just to be transparent, the path I would love to take would be to, of course, get my commercial multi at the end of the, end of the program, get a job networking, and start flying that job, flying some caravan, turboprop, something like that. Get that experience first. Move into a light jet, maybe a Citation, a, a, a Hawker, or something like that. And then from there, move into a larger jet, I don't know, a Gulfstream, a Falcon. And then I would love to build time like that. And then if I feel the need to leave, this type of flying, the 91-135 flying, then of course I would go to the 121 world and fly for a major airline. But my goal right now is honestly to stay in the 91-135 world. And uh, yeah, so just to go back to it, don't beat yourself up if you're not getting your CFI rating. You know, like I said, everyone's story is different. Just remember when you're going through all your training, always keep in the back of your head that your network is your net worth. 
I don't know if that flew over some of y'all's heads, but your network is your net worth. So get out there, shake hands, talk to people. Um, if you're a CFI now, I know I'm a new commercial pilot, but if you're a CFI now watching this, like, don't just teach your students. Go out to those hangers and talk to people because there's so many people that like would love to hire you. Um, also, uh, it's honestly the same quote. It's who you know, not what you know. You could be the most phenomenal CFI in the world, double I, MEI, you can have all of that. But if you don't know anyone or if nobody likes you, you're not going anywhere. So, uh, yeah, I know that's another rant, but just um, just wanted to share that with you guys. Just be transparent where I'm at in my journey with ATP and where it could be going in the future. I'm going to just end the video with that. You know, I said it in my first video. You got to chase your dreams, man. Uh, if you're thinking about doing this, if you're thinking about starting it, you have to chase your dreams. I'm telling you, it's not worth being like pissed off working another job or being in a depressed state because you're doing something excuse me, that you don't want to do. Chase your dreams. Be happy. Because like, just remember, and I'm going to end with this. I know I'm yapping, but just remember a dream will not chase you back. That's that's it. You got to chase your dream, like find it, you know, pinpoint it and figure out what you need to do to get there and, and chase it and never look back. So, yeah, man, so I'm going to leave you guys with that one and just peace out. Hope you guys are doing great and I'll uh, see you in the next one.